In this movie we're going to generate the assets with Photoshop that we're going to need in the portfolio project that we're going to generate in Animate. The project is to consist of three separate portfolios with three separate categories. So for example one category can be logo design, another category could be package design, and another category could be book cover design. However you want to set it up but you need to have at least three examples of the category and you have to have three categories. The final project is going to include a home page that sends us to the various portfolios but for now we're only worried about the first portfolio. So first one that I want to generate for me is going to be about my uh, pinhole digital images that I've created. Okay, so first things first, we're going to go into Photoshop. But before I go on, I've got an empty folder in here. I'm going to use this folder for the assets that Animate is going to generate. More on that later. Okay, so we're going to go into Photoshop. We're going to do a file new. We're going to select web. The dimensions of the project are 1500 by 1000. As long as you do web and set the right dimensions, everything is going to be fine. It is RGB. It is 72 pixels. And we'll go ahead and create. Okay, I want to create a gallery type experience, so I'm going to generate a wall. I'm going to go to my filter drop-down menu and slide down to render, and I'm going to render some clouds. With the option key down, there's a greater contrast between the foreground and the background color, so it comes in really dramatic like that. And the reason I'm doing that is because I want a lot of contrast. What I'm about to create is a wall effect. So back to the filter drop-down menu, I'm going to slide down to stylize and I'm going to select emboss. And that starts to look like a wall. And so you may want to adjust this a little bit in here to, to get the best look. And once you've got something that you think you can use, you're going to go ahead and hit OK. And then the next option is we can go to the image drop-down menu and select adjustments. And if we select levels, we can go ahead and pinch the levels a little bit tighter. And we can have uh, a different experience in terms of what we may want the wall to look like. So, okay, so I think I want mine to be a little bit lighter. That works okay. And now the other thing that I want to do is I want to add a lighting effect. So I'll go to the filter drop-down menu and I'm going to slide down back to render and on the bottom here there's the lighting effects. Select that. And that brings in this spotlight that I'm going to use. And by clicking on these points in here you can adjust the type of spotlight that you have. And that works for me. I'll go ahead and hit return. Okay, so next thing I want to do is I want to modify the background so slightly and so to do that I'm going to use an adjustment layer and that way I can come back and change the color later. It'll be easier for me to use hue and saturation. And so this is a black and white image so seeing a change in the spectrum isn't going to affect anything. But if I make it into colorized that's the equivalent of working with a duotone. And now I can slide this over to a slightly cooler color and desaturate it a lot. I just want a hint of the color. Okay, and if you want to make it darker, you have this adjustment over here too. So it's a pretty good tool to give you some options in terms of how you want to modify your artwork. Okay, so I'm done with that. So now what I want to do is I want to bring in my images, and I'm going to bring them in one at a time. It'll be easier to set it up that way. So I'll do a File Open, and I'll go to my desktop, go to my Portfolio folder, and here are my original files. I'll select the first one, open that up, and I'm going to pull this out, the tab, and now I'm going to select my selection tool, and I'm going to click on my image, hold the shift key down, that way it self-centers on the drag. I'll go back to that window that I had open, and I'm going to close it. I don't need it anymore. Now in here, I'm going to do a transform, Command T, and I already know the size. I've already measured it out for what the size of the window should be that I want to work with. And I'm going to change it right now. So I'm going to click on the constraint option. And the dimension, the maximum width that I want is 1,200 pixels. And I'll click, oops, lost the 1,200. 
I hit return to save the 1200 pixels and now hit return again to commit to that file size. Now I want a little bit of a drop shadow in here so I'm going to do that with my effects and I'll do a drop shadow. I don't want it to be a traditional drop shadow. I like I don't want it to be an offset. I want it to be no no distance. And now I'll play around with the spread and the size. Be careful if you make this the size too big. For example, this is really big. And and what's going to happen is when the shadow gets to the edge, it's going to clip and you'll see that razor cut on your image. So be, be aware of that. So you want to make the size fairly small and not overly dramatic, but I want it to be big enough so that the foreground image still pops. I'll go ahead and hit OK on that. And now I'm going to go grab my other images. So I'll do File Open, grab the second one, open that up, and again pull that tab out, click Shift key down, Command T, lock the proportions, 1200, hit return so it keeps that size up over here is where it's going to stay. And now hit return again to commit to the size. And now I'm going to add the effect. All I have to do is click on this with the option key and drag it over to the next one image that I created. And it adds the drop shadow to that. Easy enough. I'll go back to that original window that I brought in and I'll throw that away or close it I mean. Okay so again file open and go to the last image choice. Open that up and pull that tab out. Hold the shift key down, drag that over and it's underneath so I'm going to put it up on top so I can see it all. And while it's selected I'll do a command T for, for transform. Lock the constraints type in 1200 and hit return and return again and grab the effect uh, option first then drag it in and now we got a copy. Okay so all of them have the same exact drop shadow the image part of the uh, tutorial is done now I need to generate the buttons. So. I've already done some measuring playing around and here's what I came up with. Uh, the button size is going to be these three images but they're going to be at 300. So I'm going to make copies of these by bringing them over here to this page. I don't need the effects on the buttons so I'll throw away the effects on the top ones away. And click on that one. And that one. I think that's all three of them. So these have the effects on them and I'll just shut these down. I don't need to see these anymore. So I don't see the effects. These guys are going to all become buttons. Okay so the size that I decided all three of them should be is 300. So I'll select all three of them at the same time and call T for transform. Come over here and lock my constraint and now I'm going to make it 300 and I'll hit return to keep the number and hit return to get, commit to the size. And now I'm going to spread these out so click on the first one over here now drag this over here click on the second one put this over here and the third one will go right in here. I'm at about the halfway point of the Photoshop asset movie so I'm going to stop here and generate a new movie. In the new movie I'll rename the layers and save the file and we'll get started there.